I'm Brandon at Tailwater Fly Shop, and today we're tying the AA Flies, rest in peace, Weasel. So the hook we're using today is the Gamakatsu B10S in a size 4. It's a light, sticky hook. We're going to add a little bit of weight to it, but this is going to be a really soft landing fly. So I'm going to start right at the eye of the hook and do my usual 10 wraps back or so. Uh, just make sure I give myself enough room for a weed guard up, up front. Uh, and then the weight we're going to be using today is the Chacon Stealth Chain. Uh, this is a medium in the olive grass color. So we're going to attach that to the hook just like we always do. Uh, and this is a really good, like, you know, I kind of like real muted flash in my redfish flies. Um, so the regular bead chain, you know, obviously would be a little flashier than this. This is a real muted kind of bead chain color. So I really like this for this fly just because you know, I've got other flashier flies in my box like the gotcha and stuff. So um, I want this one to be real muted for real clean water, um, real shallow water redfish. Uh, once we get our eyes stuck on, we're going to go back to the hook point. All right there. Uh, and our tail material is going to start with Arctic Fox tail uh, in the olive color. So I'm going to take off a decent little clump here. Um, and remember, this is going to be a sparse fly, so I would even not quite use that much. Um, yeah, that's going to work pretty good for us there. We're going to take off a pretty, pretty small little clump here. Uh, and we want a fairly short tail on this. It's going to be a small, you know, wintertime kind of crustacean fly. Uh, so I'm going to pick out all those really long guard hairs. Uh, and we're going to go about a length and a half maybe of the hook shank. Get that good and trapped on. Uh, and then we usually put some different legs on here, but we just got these in, so I want to highlight uh, some Sightcast Marsh legs. These are super cool colors. Um, they really add a little pizzazz to your fly. Pizzazz? Is that a good word? Pizzazz? Pizzazz. This is the olive white and blue tip color. Uh, so we're just going to kind of keep that color match, olive and blue here. Uh, I'm going to peel off two legs. And we're just going to put these square on the hook just like we would any of our other flies. So I'm going to tie them in, you know, just on the very top side of the hook shank. Um, make sure I get that blue in there. So I'm going to pull these back just a little bit. So we just did the same thing on the other side, just keeping these legs kind of on that top, you know, quarter of the, of the fly just to keep them from fouling over a little bit. Um, and I really want this blue to just kind of shine through here. Uh, obviously, you can see we didn't use the the olive you know part of the leg necessarily on this fly but that's totally okay um, you can save these for later maybe I don't know maybe I'll use them on the next fly um, but the next thing that we're going to do is basically do our collar and finish off the fly uh, this is the EP shrimp dub brush in grass olive uh, and this is the three-quarter inch brush so um, like I said I really want this to be a sparse fly you know I've got some other flies in the box uh, like the mud bug that we've already tied and the badger tail shrimp and stuff that are a little bit bigger profile so uh, I want this to be a pretty not intimidating fly. So I wanted to land soft. I wanted to get in, you know, in front of that fish without them noticing. Um, it's a great little, great little fly for that. So we're going to tie this brush in straight on top of the hook, and do what we do with all of our brushes and just palmer it straight forward. Just make sure those eyes are good and secure. Um, and we're actually going to trap this brush behind the eye on this fly so I'm going to keep my thread right there behind the eyes palmer it over uh, and then once I get that first full wrap through I'm going to turn my brush at like almost a 45 degree angle just to keep myself from getting too much material on this hook so you see we're probably oh four or five wraps right here I'm going to do one more just to really make sure we're good on the eyes here trap it I'm 
And then once you get that brush trapped, you kind of want to pull as much of this material back as you can. Cut this out with my flush cutters. Uh, and then we're just going to pick out that material. Um, for a super sparse uh, kind of fly, you could actually just leave that stuff trapped. I, I'll do that sometimes um, on my smaller fly. Sometimes I'll tie this fly in a six or an eight as well, uh, just to keep it, you know, real small. Um, if those fish are being really, really crazy on you, you can do that. But that is the fly, and then this is a redfish fly. Uh, we're throwing this in redfish habitat. So I'm going to add a weed guard right after I trim out a couple more of these fibers here. Pretty sparse brush, so we're going to give it just a light haircut. Here it is. Uh, and then for the weed guard, we're just going to use some hard mono. This is Rio in 20 pound. Um, I like it anywhere from 12 up to 25, just kind of depending on where you're at. 20 and 25 is a good kind of happy middle. Uh, I forgot my pliers, so I'm going to do this the old fashioned way. It is not recommended by your dentist, just so you know. Uh, and we're just going to wrap this right on the hook. Get it good and trapped, and then we'll prop it up with some thread wraps back behind it. I'm going to trim it off just past the hook point here. And we will whip finish. Uh, and I didn't bring any glue today, so we're just going to double whip finish this one. I'll just wrap a couple of times. Double whip finish. And you are ready to go throw your weasel, your little blue pizzazz.